do you think that uh, sort of once the evolutionary process gets going, we will eventually, and sort of is it, is it baked into the process, we will end up with intelligent life? I think uh, all things being equal, which they seldom are in science, yes, that is, is a high likelihood. Um, there are ways one can unspin this. Um, one of them would be that if indeed some of my ideas about evolutionary convergence have any validity, then if what happens on this planet um, has happened, then you'd expect it to happen on many other planets, not all maybe. And there's a snag there, which of course may be uh, soluble in various ways. Many of you will be familiar with the famous Fermi paradox, the where are they? And the real uh, problem at the moment seems to be that there are a very large number of planetary systems which um, appeared much, much before ours. They have a head start of billions of years. So it's slightly surprising uh, that we're here, in a sense, because with that sort of head start, then one would imagine, perhaps fantastically, that there would be the equivalent of a galactic diaspora. So that's one attitude to sort of think about. Um, Stepping very slightly back and not to divert the conversation, though maybe in another way to sabotage it, let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, it is, um, I entirely agree, we are obviously evolving. We, we, we look at this stuff on the carpets, all this DNA everywhere, marvelous stuff. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, um, Homo Deus, um, Homo sapiens, Homo narans, Homo loquens, Homo everything. Um, it's being suggested, not by me, but uh, I forget, I, I cannot remember his name off the top of my head. Um, in a funny sort of way, we're no longer a species. We're everything. Well, what do you mean? In as much as, that, as Ian hinted, we are really cultural creatures now. And it's as the cultures which make us um, who we are. And of course, there are genetic changes happening all the time. But it seems to me that now we live in a certain sense in what has been described I think some accuracy is a sort of Lamarckian world rather than a Darwinian world. In other words, where because we can transmit our knowledge, then all bets are now off. In other words, mm -hmm. although we look around and take it for granted, uh, I try not to, being brought up in a remote offshore island, um, the more I see about human behavior, the more astonishing we are. So I, d I just want to come back to this question and I'd sort of try to get a, a more pointed answer. Um, do you think something like human beings was inevitable in the evolutionary process? I mean, go, go back to what we, we know happened three billion years ago. Uh, where, was it uh, more or less inherent in the process that we were, we were going to get us or something like us? Well, it's like being stopped by the traffic cops. You just say, yes. So, yes, I mean, in that sense, yes. On the other hand, <laughs> uh, to unpack your point, uh, which I think is actually a lot of fun, you mentioned about the dinosaurs not going extinct because the asteroids skimmed across the top of the atmosphere. Actually, they wouldn't have made any difference because it was volcanism which really did it, but we won't spoil the story. <laughs> um, but w what I've been thinking about a little bit recently in that context are two things. Um, you said, would we humans be here, if I remember correctly? I have all your notes, thank you. Um, <laughs> 2017. No, of course not. But in fact, we would be here in about 50 million years' time. Because, of course, the mammals had evolved during the time of the dinosaurs. Well, in fact, it's a slightly more complicated story. And it's now fairly clear to some paleontologists that the mammals, the group we belong to, uh, the placentals and the marsupials, there are lots of others as well, were already beginning to diversify during the time of the dinosaurs. And my view of mass extinctions, which would not please some people, is that they're generally regarded as something which is utterly catastrophic, correct, but then they wipe the tape of life so clean that it's almost as if you can start from first principles. Um, but in point of fact, I think paradoxically, mass extinctions are actually creative. They give you time for nothing. The things which are going to happen, like warm-blooded, bipedal, large-brained, vocalizing, etc., 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 because they have evolved a number of times independently, it gives me some confidence that this would happen. So, so the mammals would, at a certain point, outcompete the dinosaurs. They will, for very good reasons, because uh, partly they're warm-blooded. Now, as um, Ian was saying, with regard to Dale Russell's um, idea about the theropod turning into it, of course, in a certain sense, the dinosaurs became birds, mm -hmm. and the birds, like the parrots and the crows, in a certain way, have shown a degree of cognitive sophistication, which is very, very remarkable from that perspective. But um, it's not a thing that 
you know, we are the top of the pile and therefore we should be terribly pleased with ourselves, rather the reverse actually. Uh, and as Ellen was saying, with regard to everybody else who's helping us on this great journey, that's absolutely fine. You know, we, we couldn't possibly do without them. But our problem now is that, as I see it, <laughs> this is so trivial it's, it's hardly worth saying, is that, you know, only, only we, and to some extent scientists, but it's equally true of artists in a very different way, only we understand this. <laughs> only we find this interesting. I mean, you don't see, you know, many nematodes sort of reading the Daily Telegraph. <laughs> so I, I want to come back to this question to, to you, Ian. Uh, were highly intelligent creatures mm -hmm. inevitable in the evolutionary process? Well, we know that one highly intelligent creature, in our sense of the notion highly intelligent, I mean, we know that one evolved. But we also know that if everything that had happened before it over millions and millions or hundreds of millions of years of uh, mammal and, and vertebrate evolution, if any of those things hadn't happened, we wouldn't be here. So or we wouldn't be talking. We wouldn't be uh, talking about uh, being here so can you as we are today. Can, can you identify one specific, not one, but an example of something that's really radically re-diverted? Well, I would, I would imagine that if the, if the, uh, if in the shrinking shrinking forest situation of the late Miocene in Africa, mm -hmm. um, no hominoids had come to the ground and walked upright, which is a very, very, very unusual thing Certainly to do. Is, yeah. um, uh, that, that really everything that is a consequence of having started to walk upright uh, would never have happened. So we and needed, bi we needed bipedalism and we needed uh, yeah. hands to... We needed bipedalism and we needed the, the hands. It's very interesting that actually our very early uh, precursors already had pretty good uh, mm -hmm. manipulating hands, even before they left the entire sort of uh, the, the, the woodland habitat. Um, anyway, and all of this stuff was absolutely necessary. If they hadn't acquired manipulative hands, if they hadn't uh, acquired uh, uh, um, upright posture and all the things that uh, derived from it, uh, we really wouldn't be here talking about it today. And um, actually, Becoming uh, bipedal is, 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 is an extraordinary thing to have done because, you know, people have talked a lot about what the advantages are of being bipedal mm -hmm. on the ground. But imagine you're an, an ape in a tree and you're basically a quadruped and you come to the ground and you're not going to tell yourself, oh my gosh, you know, I could see further if I stood upright or I could uh, carry stuff around if I was only walking around on two legs. The only reason you'd walk around on two legs is because walking on two legs was a natural thing to do. And the only way that that could be a natural thing to do was if you were not absolutely exceptional in the trees in keeping your, uh, your trunk upright um, an extraordinarily large proportion um, of the time, as, as gibbons do and as, mm, sure. as, as she fuckers in, 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 you know, in, 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 in Madagascar do. Um, <clears throat> and they're upright when they come to the ground but not in the sense that, uh, that we are. But anyway, this is an extraordinarily rare combination of events that, uh, that, that, that kicked all of this off. And if it hadn't um, occurred, then we wouldn't be here. So, so, so Melanie, uh, do, you, do you think this the sort of, we, we're here as the product of a very rare combination of events that just happened to come to pass? Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I do. No, I, I mean, er, earlier you, uh, you, you two agreed that there were sort of um, parameters to evolution, <clears throat> right? And that there, everything isn't possible. But um, underneath it, there's like a fundal dis fundamental disagreement about what exactly yes, those limits <laughs> are, <laughs> right? Um, I would definitely agree with Ian um, with, with his uh, formulation of how Things would go. I mean, I think I think I've seen the uh, Martian theropod <laughs> bipedal gigantic brain looks like you know aliens from per, uh, Close Encounters or something like that in some museum mural somewhere when I was like twelve or something. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, I think that um, I, it also depends on what exactly you mean by would it have to be exactly like us <laughs> evolving? You know. Um, Lauren Isley, who I think he was the director of the museum at Penn, right? He wrote this wonderful, completely out there essay that included this long passage about dolphins and how intelligent they are and how different their intelligence is from mm. ours because they don't have hands and they can't mm. make things. And it gets kind of trippy when you keep mm. reading it, but mm. um, and apparently his ghost is still haunting the museum. That was what they told us <laughs> when I was in school. Mm. But um, 
I mean, it makes you think, you know, if we didn't have the facilities that we have, that we evolved with, there are many other intelligent species, but not necessarily intelligent the same way that we are. Sure. Um, so exactly how directional that is, yeah. I don't know. If intelligence was inevitable, I would expect there to be more intelligent but, species, you know, that, that we recognize yeah. as being intelligent in a way that we can comprehend.